Hi, I'm Elizabeth and welcome to my hormone series. In this series, we're going to look at what hormones are in your body, what are they doing, what should they be doing, and how do you convince them to do what they should be doing. This series is meant for informational purposes only. It is not meant for medical diagnosis. So if you have a question about hormones, please go talk to your doctor about that. But I hope this is helpful for you. Let's dive in. Today we're going to talk about estrogen. So estrogen is a big hormone. It is popular, a lot of people know about it. It's very complex. Um, it's re really powerful. It does a lot in our body, not to undermine the other hormones. They all do a lot and they all play a really important piece of a very complex puzzle. But estrogen is a really well known and it mm, covers a lot of symptoms. So people think of estrogen as a female only hormone, which isn't the case. Males and females have estrogen, but it is dominant in females. Estrogen is produced primarily by the ovaries and starts being produced during puberty. So when a woman begins her period, that's when estrogen levels start to increase or are at their highest. It cycles throughout the month. So during your menstrual cycle, it kind of fluctuates a little bit. And then as menopause hits, estrogen levels really start to decline. And so you can have symptoms that go along with estrogen levels being out of sync of where they're supposed to be. Um, estrogen can be high or estrogen can be low. And we're going to talk about what that might look like for you. Because when someone comes in and says that they're having, they're struggling with their hormones, there's a lot of hormones that can be at play here, but estrogen is absolutely one that we see a lot of. So what does high estrogen look like in the body? It can look like breast cysts, um, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, symptoms of PMS, so headaches, breast tenderness, um, bloating, mood swings, fatigue, insomnia, cravings. Uh, it can look like endometriosis for some people. High estrogen can play a role in PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'll be talking about that later when, with other hormones. Um, depression and anxiety is something. Estrogen can interact with other hormones like thyroid hormones or insulin or actually melatonin. So estrogen can cause all sorts of things that we don't even tie really directly to estrogen, like breast cysts, for example. Estrogen can be a sneaky little hormone and it can be hard to figure out what levels, what it looks like, sorry, when you're, if levels are high. Um, but one of the more important things to know about high estrogen is that there are cancers in the body that are estrogen dependent. So certain types of breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer can be estrogen dependent and high levels of estrogen can increase your risk of some of those cancers. So keeping your estrogen levels in check is actually really important for just daily function and feeling good, but also overall health. Now, low estrogen, on the other hand, can look like a number of things. So it can look like infertility, um, amenorrhea, or the, you know, not having any more menstrual cycles, um, osteoporosis, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later, and symptoms of menopause. So hot flashes, sleep challenges, dryness, like vaginal dryness or eye dryness is a thing. Um, that can be occurring with menopause if that's kind of the where you're at in your cycle. But if those symptoms are popping up a little bit earlier than they normally would, definitely talk to your doctor and have them check your estrogen levels for you. Now, that is something I just want to harp on a little bit here is that it's pretty easy to say, oh, I get PMS symptoms all the time. I must have high estrogen levels. Everything I'm going to talk about today is all recommendations around what you can do to optimize hormones through diet, lifestyle, and the things that you have control over. If you actually suspect that you have hormone imbalances of any type, I would strongly recommend you going to chat with your doctor and have them do an assessment. So there are sometimes a place for medication, um, hormonal things, um, further investigation into all of these symptoms. And so definitely talk to your doctor. But here is how you can optimize your estrogen health in general specifically but really hormone health in general to keep those hormones in optimal levels and keep you feeling really good so number one is eat lots of brassica vegetables brassica vegetables include broccoli cauliflower um, brussels sprouts cabbage they have a compound that is incredibly helpful to metabolize estrogen properly um, number two is exercise regularly. It's amazing. It's good for all the things. Number three is eating healthy fats. Healthy fats make healthy cholesterol, which actually makes estrogen. So healthy fats like raw nuts and seeds, avocados, extra virgin olive oil, fish oil from fatty fish, um, 
you know, coconut oil and butter in moderation. So those are the ones you really want to focus on avoiding um, some more of the inflammatory oils like peanuts and um, some of the omega-6s and stuff. I have another resource on fats that I can get into another time, but um, really focusing on the healthy fats. Ensuring regular bowel movements. So estrogen is metabolized by the body and then detoxified essentially and then removed and it's removed through the digestive tract and through the bowel movements so aiming for at least one bowel movement a day is where you want to be more is good too you can't have too many um, but aiming for at least one a day if you tend more towards the constipated side adding good fiber make sure you're throwing shove, make sure you're following that up with lots of water good vegetables exercise regularly that's going to help that too so making sure you've got regular bowel movements will help keep those estrogen levels optimal a good night's sleep you're not going to get any hormone optimization without a really consistent good night's sleep so focusing on that um making sure your lights help so no bright lights at night you know dark at night bright during the day dark at night is going to help the melatonin is going to help the estrogen um, is going to help hormone balance in general and phytoestrogens so phytoestrogens are such a neat thing these are things that are found in plant that kind of mimic estrogen so when your estrogen levels are low phytoestrogens actually stimulate the estrogen receptor to make your body think it has more estrogen and when your estrogen levels are too high they block the receptor to kind of turn down the volume they're so neat so including things like two tablespoons of ground flax every day an incredible phytoestrogen super effective for hormone balancing um Make sure it's freshly ground flax, that flax oxidizes pretty quickly. But this is also another source of really healthy fats, really good fiber, make sure you're gonna add water to that. Other phytoestrogens include soy. So soy milk in moderation is absolutely helpful to, to modulate estrogen levels. Tofu, tofu is another great source of soy, but also a phytoestrogen. So I mentioned that estrogen gets detoxified by the body and that's how it gets processed. There's actually three different types of estrogen. The body needs to kind of move it out, move it through, keep it going. It's, it's all part of a cycle and it's the liver that does that. And so making sure your, your liver's job is to detoxify. It's to clean out everything and it does a really good job at that. There are cases where it won't. Those are pretty severe cases, right? So those are cases where we've got fatty liver disease or end-stage liver cancers or things like that where your liver is not cleaning it out like it should be. Your liver is generally working pretty well. But there are things that you can do to make sure your liver is working optimally. Those include, and there's gonna be a lot of repetition here, exercise daily, um, focusing on a whole foods diet with lots of leafy greens, healthy vegetables, and the brassicas. Two to three liters of water every day is amazing just for general health, but liver health in particular. Avoiding alcohol and avoiding caffeine as much as you can, so those can be a little bit taxing on the liver. Um, medications in general um, can be, not to say don't take medications, but everything that we put into our body needs to be detoxified by the liver. So the less that we can put into it, the better the liver is going to be able to work. But I say that knowing that we need to take medications sometimes and that's okay. Uh, fish oil can really help with liver function. Um, a good multi B vitamin. So I'm not really going to get into the specifics on the supplements, like I mentioned. I'm going to leave that to a healthcare practitioner. But a, a B vitamin, a multi B vitamin, I don't mind recommending. So B vitamins are water soluble. If you take them in excess, you will eliminate them, and they can be really helpful for a bunch of different things. So a multi B vitamin is something that I tend to. Um, safely recommend to many people. A good night's sleep is going to help your liver detoxification every day. So make sure that you're squeezing that in there too. Now I can't talk about estrogens without talking about xenoestrogens. And this is why I have to be honest, why estrogens are so prevalent these days. If you've never heard of the term xenoestrogen, it's X-E-N-O estrogen. What it is, is it's an environmental thing that simulates estrogen in the body. So it's, they come from man-made chemicals, they're found in pesticides, plastics, um, pharmaceutical drugs, and most man-made things like paint, fire retardants, PCBs have xenoestrogens in them. And so we ingest them one way or another and they mimic estrogen in our body. And this is why a lot of women come in with symptoms of high estrogen. Even if their estrogen levels are 
you know, relatively normal or close to normal, xenoestrogens can make those symptoms appear very much aggravated. Xenoestrogens are a real problem. They're causing all sorts of hormonal imbalances, all sorts of challenges. And you hear people moving to organic foods and clean cleaning products, green cleaning products, and all of these things. And it's actually more important than most people recognize because the chemical level that we carry in our body is getting really high and it is throwing off our hormones. And so how do you avoid xenoestrogens? Well, there's good news and bad news. Your body will continue to process the xenoestrogens. So doing the things that I just recommended to keeping your endogenous hormones optimal, that's a good thing. Um, making sure your liver is functioning, making sure you're sleeping well, all of those are really important. But the extra steps that you can take to avoid xenoestrogens, so avoiding plastic as much as possible. One of the things I like to do to avoid plastic is to avoid it in around food if I can. So I store my food in glass containers as much as I can. I even freeze some food in glass. Um, I never, mi never microwave in plastic. I will microwave in glass or I'll put it on a plate. Um, I drink out of glass or stainless steel. I don't drink out of plastic water bottles if I can help it. There's always exceptions. But really making sure, because one of the things about xenoestrogens is that they leach whenever the plastic is at extreme temperatures. So if you're heating food or freezing food, xenoestrogens are more likely to leach into your food. So avoiding as many plastics as you can. Plastic is all around us. It's in everything we touch. It's in the pens that we hold. It's on the computer type, like the, the keyboards that we're typing on. It's on our phones. It's everywhere. So limiting as much as you can. And for me, that's food is a big one for me to limit it with. That is going to avoid your exposure to xenoestrogens. A second way is avoiding what is known as BPA or bisphenol A. So you're going to see lots of plastics out there that will say BPA free. BPA is a substance that they put in plastics. They'll actually not that long ago, to help keep the plastics nice and hard um, that contain xenoestrogens. Now, avoiding, I just in general try to avoid hard plastics as much as you can, but things like grocery store receipts have BPA in them, so avoiding that. Um, avoid pesticide exposure as much as you can, so when you're able to, choose organic foods. Wash your non-organic foods with, with vinegar and water will help to kind of remove some of those pesticides, but avoiding them as much as possible and using really good skincare products. Everything you put in your body, your liver needs to get rid of, same thing with what you put on your body. Your skin is your body's biggest organ. And so when you use certain soaps or creams or lotions or face washes or all of those things, you're going to be, you're, that has to go through your liver. And so the more natural you can keep your skincare regimen, um, the better. Now I'm gonna put a link in the video, in the description to the Environmental Working Group Skin Deep database. It's an incredible database that evaluates all sorts of different skincare products and how good they are for your skin, but more for your general health, including the, you know, the hormonal um, impact of them. And the next thing too, one last thing is your cleaning products. So cleaning products contain, traditional cleaning products contain a lot of xenoestrogens. So moving more towards things like vinegar, um, peroxide, there's all sorts of natural green cleaning products out there that are available now that are amazing. So try out a few, see which ones you like. Um, and try to limit the cleaning products in your home. And that is a really good start to cutting back your exposure to xenoestrogens. One last point on estrogen. So estrogen is incredibly important in bone health. So during a female's reproductive years, this is, especially early on, that's when bone is deposited and grows and gets strong. After menopause, Estrogen plays a big role in helping keep this bone healthy and strong. And after menopause, when estrogen levels drop, bone health tends to decline too. And so if you have a family history of osteoporosis, making sure that you've got optimal bone health before you hit menopause is key. And if you've already gone through menopause, making sure that you're paying attention to your bone health is also important. Now bone health is complicated. So there's vitamins, vitamin K, vitamin D, minerals like calcium and magnesium that all play a role in bone health. But estrogen does too. And so by optimizing your hormones and doing a few key things during your reproductive years and even into postmenopausal years, it's going to help reduce your risk of osteoporosis. So number one, focus on a whole foods diet that's rich in veggies as much as you can. 
Number two, strength training and weight bearing. So strength training is exactly like it sounds, lifting weights, getting stronger by lifting, lifting heavy things, by building your strength. Weight bearing exercise means to bear your own weight. So to go for a walk, go for a run, hike, um, I guess cycling to some degree. Swimming is it's swimming is an amazing exercise for a lot of things. Not so great for weight bearing because the buoyancy of the water kind of lifts you up a little bit. But anything that you can do in those two categories, strength training or weight bearing, is incredible for bone health. It helps to build bone without the need for estrogen. It's amazing. So if you are premenopausal and you don't do those consistently, I urge you start now. If you're postmenopausal and you don't do those consistently, I urge you start now. It's never too late. Get onto the strength training and the weight bearing exercises as soon as you can within your fitness level and your comfort for now, but make sure you are challenging yourself. Drink lots of water. Um, use phytoestrogens. We talked about that. Two tablespoons of freshly ground flaxseed, tofu, soy milk occasionally. They are your friend, especially when it comes to your bone health. Make sure your vitamin D levels are optimal. So have that checked with your doctor. No smoking. Smoking is very acidic and can negatively impact bone health. Avoiding alcohol as much as possible. Alcohol is not so good for your bone health either. And checking the side effects of your medications. So there's some medications like hormonal birth controls, um, prednisone is one, some chemotherapy medications that actually can deplete your bone reserves. So just be aware that if you are on any of those medications, you might need other medication to offset the bone loss. It might be that you want to change it to a different birth control. You might have options. Just know what your reality is and know what you're working with to make sure that you're able to focus on your bone health. Like I mentioned, estrogen is just one hormone in a very complex hormonal picture. So stay tuned for more details on more hormones coming in future videos. But here's the thing. To really optimize hormones in general, so of all the things, sleep is key. Sleep is necessary for repair, regeneration, rest, restoration, all of those things. And if sleep is a challenge for you, that's where I come in. I'm going to put a link in the description. You can hop on over and book a sleep assessment call. It's a free 45 minute call where I can help you kind of sort out where you're at with your sleep, where you need to go and how you need to get there. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any, if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts. I will talk to you soon. I hope you have a great day.